Hey, what up? Welcome back. Today we're discussing Chapter 18, Shock. Let's get started. Injuries and medical emergencies can become life-threatening as a result of shock. When the body experiences injury or sudden illness, it responds in a number of ways. Survival depends on the body's ability to adapt to the physical stresses of injury or illness. When the body's measures to adapt fail, the injured or ill person can progress into a life-threatening condition called shock. Shock complicates the effect of injury or sudden illness. In this chapter, you will learn to recognize the signs and symptoms of shock and how to provide care to minimize it. Shock, or hypoperfusion, is a progressive condition in which the circulatory system fails to adequately circulate oxygenated blood to all parts of the body. When vital organs such as the brain, heart, and lungs do not receive sufficient oxygenated blood, the body begins a series of responses to protect those organs. The amount of blood circulating to the less important tissues of the arms, legs, and skin is reduced so that more can go to the vital organs. This reduction in blood circulation to the skin causes a person in shock to appear pale or ashen and feel cool. While in the short term this can protect the body's most crucial organs, if the situation is not treated quickly, shock can lead to death. When the body is healthy, three conditions are necessary to maintain adequate blood flow. The heart must be working well. The blood vessels must be intact and able to adjust blood flow, and an adequate amount of blood must be circulating in the body. Injury or sudden illness can interrupt normal body functions. In cases of minor injury or illness, this interruption is brief because the body is able to compensate quickly. With more severe injuries or illness, however, the body is unable to adjust. When the body is unable to meet its demands for oxygen because the blood fails to circulate adequately, shock occurs. Shock results from inadequate delivery of oxygenated blood to the body's tissues. There are several possible reasons for shock to occur. It can be the result of severe bleeding or loss of fluid from the body, failure of the heart to pump enough oxygenated blood, abnormal dilation of the blood vessels, or even impaired blood flow to the organs or cells. The condition and functioning of the heart can have a significant impact on the likelihood of shock. If the heart rate is too slow, the rate of new oxygenated blood cells reaching each part of the body will not be enough to keep up with the demand. If the heart beats too rapidly, ventricular tachycardia, or if the heartbeat care becomes erratic, like ventricular fibrillation, the oxygenated blood is not sent throughout the body as it should be. Damage to the heart can lead to weak, ineffective contractions. This can be related to disease, like diabetes or cardiovascular disease, poisoning, or respiratory distress. If blood vessels are not able to adequately constrict or become abnormally dilated, even though the blood volume is adequate and the heart is beating well, the vessels are not filled completely with blood. Since oxygen is absorbed into the body through the walls of the blood vessels, this condition leads to less oxygen being available to the body. Abnormal dilation of the blood vessels can be caused by neck fractures with a spinal cord injury or by infection or anaphylaxis. Insufficient blood volume can lead to shock. Also, if the levels of some components of the blood, such as plasma or fluids, become too low, blood flow will be impaired and shock can result. These conditions can occur due to bleeding, severe vomiting, diarrhea, and burns. Shock can also occur following any injury to the chest, obstruction of the airway, or any other respiratory problem that decreases the amount of oxygen in the lungs. This means insufficient oxygen enters the bloodstream. There are four major types of shock, hypovolemic, obstructive, distributive, and cardiogenic. All cause a drop in blood pressure and have the same outcome if not treated quickly. Hypovolemic shock is due to a severe lack of blood and fluid within the body. Hemorrhagic shock is the most common type of hypovolemic shock. It results from blood loss, either through external or internal bleeding, which causes a decrease in total blood volume. Obstructive shock is caused by the same type of obstruction to blood flow, usually within the blood vessels, such as a pulmonary embolism, tension pneumothorax, or cardiac tamponade. Distributive shock refers to any type of shock caused by inadequate distribution of blood either in the blood vessels or throughout the body, leading to inadequate volumes of blood returning to the heart. It includes the following. Neurogenic or vasogenic shock is caused by spinal cord or brain trauma. 
The blood vessel walls normally constrict and dilate to circulate the blood throughout the circulatory system. In neurogenic shock, the messages are not relayed and the blood pools at the lowest point of the body. Anaphylaxis, also referred to as anaphylactic shock, occurs as a result of exposure to an allergen. It is a whole body reaction that causes dilation of the blood vessels and constriction of the airways, which in turn causes blood to pool and trouble breathing. Septic shock occurs when an infection has spread to the point that bacteria are releasing toxins into the bloodstream. The blood pressure drops when the tissues become damaged from the circulating toxins. Cardiogenic shock is the result of the heart being unable to supply adequate blood circulation to the vital organs, resulting in an inadequate supply of oxygen and nutrients. Disease, trauma, or injury to the heart causes this type of shock. Other types of shock include hypoglycemic, metabolic, psychogenic, and respiratory shock. Hypoglycemic shock is a reaction to extremely low blood glucose levels. Metabolic shock is the result of a loss of body fluid, which can be due to severe diarrhea, vomiting, or heat-related illness. Psychogenic shock is due to factors such as emotional stress that can cause blood to pool in the body in areas away from the brain, which can result in fainting. Respiratory shock is the failure of the lungs to transfer sufficient oxygen into the bloodstream and occurs with respiratory distress or arrest. Because this is a progressive condition, the signs and symptoms you will see depend on what stage of shock the person is in, and this will change over time. At first, the signs and symptoms may seem minor, but responding to them promptly will increase the patient's chance of survival. Early signs may include that you may observe a patient expresses feelings of apprehension and anxiety. The patient's body temperature is slightly lower than normal. The patient is breathing quickly. The patient's pulse is slightly increased. The patient's blood pressure is normal or slightly decreased. And the patient's skin is pale or ashen and cool. Later, you may observe that the patient is listless and confused and may have difficulty speaking. The patient's breathing has slowed down and is shallow and irregular. The patient's blood pressure is decreasing. Diastolic blood pressure may even reach zero. The patient's pulse is rapid, but the pulse is weak and irregular. The patient's skin is pale, cold, and clammy, and the body temperature is much lower than normal. The patient's pupils are dilated and slow to respond to light. In pediatric considerations, early signs of shock may be absent in young children or infants because the bodies may compensate for some of the factors that cause shock by maintaining blood pressure at normal levels. If the conditions continue, however, the situation can suddenly deteriorate into severe shock. Because the child is smaller than an adult, blood volume is less and losing what seems like a small amount of blood can be serious, making children more susceptible to shock. Do not wait for signs and symptoms of shock, shock to develop when treating a young child or infant, but treat promptly based on your assessment of the injuries or trauma. Once you have assessed the patient and determined that there are signs and symptoms of shock present, quick response is essential. Be sure the patient's airway is open and clear, perform the primary assessment, administer emergency oxygen if available, and provide appropriate ventilatory support. Take steps to control any bleeding at present and prevent future blood loss. Since you may not be sure of the patient's condition, leave him or her lying flat. If you see any suspected broken bones or dislocated or damaged joints, immobilize them to prevent movement. Broken bones or dislocated or damaged joints can cause more bleeding and damage. Cover the patient with a blanket to prevent loss of body heat. It is important not to overheat the patient. Your goal should be to maintain a normal body temperature. If the patient's lying on cold ground, and if it is possible to do so without causing harm, you may want to put the blanket under the patient as well. This also works for hot environments. Talk to the patient in a calm and reassuring manner to reduce the harmful effects of emotional stress. If you can help the patient rest in a comfortable position and reduce the pain, this will also be beneficial. Pain intensifies the body's reactions and can accelerate the progression of shock. Do not give any food or drink, even if the patient asks for them. The patient's likely to be thirsty due to the fluid loss. However, depending on the condition, surgery may be needed, and it's better for the patient's stomach to be empty if that's the case. More advanced emergency medical personnel will be able to provide fluid replacement intravenously. 
treat any specific injuries or conditions, and have the patient transported to a hospital as soon as possible. Any condition or trauma situation where the body's ability to get oxygenated blood to the vital organs is compromised can lead to shock. Left untreated, shock is a progressive condition that can be fatal. Shock can be caused by a loss of blood or body fluids when the heart is not pumping blood effectively by overdilation of the blood vessels or by damage to the chest or airways. If any of these conditions are present, it is important to watch for the patient for signs and symptoms of shock. These include decreasing blood pressure, increasing heart rate, increasing respiratory rate, pale or ashen, cool, clammy skin, pupils that are dilated and slow to respond, and anxiety and apprehension at first turning into confusion and listlessness as shock progresses. To treat shock, first ensure that the patient has an open and clear airway in his breathing. Administer emergency oxygen or artificial ventilation as appropriate. Control bleeding at present and keep the patient lying flat. Splint any broken bones or joints and keep the patient warm by covering the patient with a blanket. Reassure and comfort the patient. Try to keep the patient comfortable and reduce any pain. Do not give any food or drink. Treat any specific injuries, call for more advanced medical personnel, and transport the patient to a hospital as soon as possible. Well, that's everything I have to tell you about shock. Until next time, be good people, do good things, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.